Are you positioning yourself to be blessed? Amen. Hallelujah. Well, let's just ask the Lord to touch our hearts this morning. I need a fresh touch too. Everybody, anybody need a fresh touch? We need a fresh touch every day. Hallelujah. Oh, Father, I thank you that you're touching our hearts this morning. Father, I thank you that you're stirring us up, oh God. Father, I thank you that you are transitioning us. Lord, I thank you that there is an atmospheric shift. Lord, we're calling it into our hearts, our lives, our homes, our families. Lord, many of us are gathering with our families. Lord, we're declaring there's a shift in our families. Father, we're declaring that our families shall be saved. Lord, we're declaring a shift over this city. We're declaring that Hamilton is a city of God. Father, we're declaring, pray with me, saints. We're declaring that there is a shift in Hamilton. And Lord, that you are raising up your end time warriors. There's a shift in this nation. Oh, there's a shift. There's a shift. There's a shift. That was the prophetic word that came forth this morning. That we are changing the atmosphere here. Hallelujah. And I am declaring over you that there is a shift, even this Thanksgiving, that you're going to mark it, that there was a shift in your heart, that there was a shift in your life, that you may have been in one gear, but you're shifting gears. And the Holy Spirit is shifting something in you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Do you want it? Do you embrace it? Are you partnering with it? The Holy Spirit is shifting. He is shifting us. He is shifting atmospheres. He is shifting a nation. Oh, Lord, we cry out for our nation. We cry out for Canada. Lord, we say, let there be a shift in this nation. Lord, let there be a shift in the government. Lord, let there be a shift in our young people. Oh, let there be a shift in this nation of God. And Lord, even as you're bringing in the nations of the world into Canada, you know, uh, last night we had people there from Syria. We had people there from Sri Lanka. We had people there from Turkey and France and Mexico. Father, you're bringing the people here. God, I'm asking, Lord, that we would be healing for the nations. Healing for the nations. Healing for this generation. Oh, I want to ask you, do you speak in tongues every day? The Holy Ghost has filled you. He has filled you because you needed the power for the hour. And I remember when Pastor Jane would come, every time she would come, she'd say, are you speaking in tongues every day? Are you speaking in other tongues? Other tongues. Say other tongues. Other tongues. By the way, this is free. This is not even in my message. But when I was just praying... Oh, we need to get a hold of God. Are you speaking in other tongues every day? We need to be living, living in the book of Acts. You know, sometimes when you press into the Holy Spirit and you, you shift gears, and there's a shift in your prayer language. When you get filled with the Holy Spirit for the initial time that, that God touches you with that experience, there's a shift in your heart, in your life. You begin to speak in tongues. It's a sign of being filled. You can go to Acts 2 and you can look that up. Jesus said, Terry, wait. Until the Holy Spirit comes upon you. We need the Holy Ghost again. We need to constantly be infilled and be filled up. And he said, wait, it's so important that you be filled because you can't go. You can't do what you're called to do 
unless the Holy Spirit is filling you. Now, by, when, the, when we get saved, we have the Holy Spirit inside of us from that moment. But when you get baptized, there's a dunking, there's a dosing, there's a, a submersion. And when we get baptized in the Holy Spirit, we're submersed in him. And when we activate our prayer language, there's a fresh submersion that goes on. Many times we're guilty of just dipping our toe in, you know what I mean? But God wants to submerge us afresh with his power, with his passion. Why am I talking about this? Well, the Lord put this word upon my heart this morning. He put the word zeal. Say zeal. 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 The Lord said this to me. Tell them that I want to encounter them, and I want them to encounter me. You see, there is something that happens when we encounter God. We're not the same. He touches us. He changes us. He fills us. He causes there to be a what? What was the word of the day this morning? He causes there to be a shift. When we encounter him, we can't stay the same. Remember what happened to Paul or Saul, as he was called in Acts. Saul was so religious, and he was zealous. But he was zealous for the wrong thing. Do you remember that? He was persecuting Christians. He was so convinced that he was right, that he was against the way. He was against Jesus Christ until he had an encounter. (laughs) And when he had that encounter, it changed everything. It changed everything. He was zealous, but he was zealous for the wrong thing. He was zealous for rules. He was zealous for the the religion, the way that he thought it was supposed to be. But the Lord says, I want you to be zealous for me. And when Saul had an encounter... Then you remember the story. It was like he encountered the glory of God in such a a dimension. But do you remember what was on his eyes? The scales. I'm telling you, God is lifting scales off of our eyes so we can encounter him in a new way. We can experience his glory in a new way because there's a lot of scales on our eyes. And you know what it comes from? It comes from the tradition, just like Saul had had so many traditions in his heart and his life. It comes from our culture. It comes from our upbringing. It comes from our families. It comes from all kind of stuff in the world. These scales that inhibit our vision of having a true encounter and experience of God. And you know, many people are in the church, but they got scales on because they haven't had a real encounter. And then they're looking at people and they say, well, the, I don't like this and I don't like that and I don't like this and they're not doing this and they're not doing that. And they can tell you everything that's wrong with people, but they're not encountering Jesus. We need to be all about encountering Jesus. We need to make our supreme desire to encounter Jesus, to encounter God, to encounter Holy Spirit. And I'm telling you, the scales begin to fall. The scales begin to fall off and we'll say, what was I doing? Why was I wasting my time on this? Why was this so important to me? Why did I have this as a priority? Because it's meaningless in the grand scheme of things. Because Satan will do this, he will scale our eyes up. And what begins to happen is that we would become those that we're not pursuing the glory. We're pursuing all kinds of other things. But we can be just as zealous as Saul was doing the wrong thing. 
I don't know about you, but when I get there, I don't want to say, well, I was putting baskets in the wrong basket, balls in the wrong basket. I was making points for the wrong team. I was pursuing the wrong thing. I want to get in the game. This morning when I was in bed and, you know, I was the, on my bed and just kind of listening to the Lord, I saw something. And when you're in the morning, when you're first waking up, give that time to the Lord, even when you're in the bed, and just begin to kind of meditate on him. He'll speak to you unusual things that you wouldn't normally, because you haven't gotten to the busyness of your day. And so there's kind of like an ease just to him, for him to drop things in your spirit. And what I saw this morning was I saw a Hamilton Tie Cats player, and he was busting through this, uh, you know, like when the, they announce the players and they kind of come through the paper. You guys know what I'm talking about? And he was coming through, and I heard the Lord say this, get in the game. Get in the game. And I feel like it's time for Hamilton it's time for you, it's time for me, it's time for us to get in the game. And there is a zealousness that comes with being in the game that is a zealousness for the Lord. There's a zealousness for that which he's called us to. There's a zealousness for him. There's a zealousness for his presence. There's a zealousness to know him, but you've got to get in the game. Some of us, we're playing games. We're not in the game. This is what the Lord said to me. Zeal. Actually, this is not what the Lord said. This is the definition. Listen to zeal. A great energy or enthusiasm in pursuit of a cause or an objective. A great energy or enthusiasm. So what I want to ask us this morning is, what is our spiritual energy and our spiritual enthusiasm? What is that like? Because God wants to give you a fresh zeal. God wants to give you a fresh zeal. Here's other words that represent zeal. Passion, zealousness, committedness, ardor, love, fervor, fire. Fire, don't you like that? Fire! Devotion, devotedness. Enthusiasm. I'm going to hold my mic a little bit farther away, so you might need to turn me up because I'm trying not to p you out of here. <laughs> Enthusiasm, eagerness, keenness, appetite. Appetite? I want to ask you, what's your appetite for? Taste, relish, gusto, vigor, energy, zest, fervency, ardency. Oh, come on. God wants to give the church a fresh zeal. This is what he was speaking to me about. He wants us, all of us as a company, and all those beyond us in the church, whatever age we are, whatever spiritual maturity we are, he is calling us, and this is what he said to me, generation zeal. Now, for those of you, you may know that there is a Generation Z, right? And I'm going to talk to you about that in a few minutes in terms of ages. But the Lord was speaking to me, regardless of age, he's called us to be Generation Zeal. Because there is a new fire, there is a zealousness, there is a pursuit of God that we need. I want to read you a scripture. This is Judges 2, 10 through 19. Now they're talking about Joshua's generation and when Joshua's generation, when Joshua went on to be the, with the Lord. And it says, and when all that generation had been gathered up to their fathers, another generation arose after them who did not know the Lord nor the work for which he had done for Israel. We're talking about Thanksgiving today. 
but this is a different kind of Thanksgiving message. And it says, when the children of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord, they served the Baals. And they forsook the Lord God of their fathers, who had brought them out of the land of Egypt. And they followed other gods from among the gods of the people who were all around them. And they bowed down to them. And they provoked the Lord to anger. Now this is the generation. This is the generation that had come up. And they had forgotten what God had done. They had forgotten the mighty deliverance. They had forgotten what he had done for the last generation. And it said they served the Baals. Well, we remember the story when Moses was up. When he was up, even getting the Ten Commandments, it didn't take him too long to forget, did it? I'm telling you, we become a forgetful people. But we need to experience, and we need to be people who experience God for ourselves. We have to experience God for ourselves. We've got to encounter God for ourselves. And we have to be those who desire to be zealous. You see, I've got to make a choice. You've got to make a choice. Who will you serve? As for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. And when I say that, I'm saying, as for me and my house, I'm going to serve the Lord. As for me and my house, I'm going to serve the Lord. As for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. We need to be those that would be contenders for zeal, personally, family, corporately. City, we need to be those that would contend on every front. And I'm going to talk to you about some things this morning. And I'm going to ask you, we need to be contending for this generation. Because I don't know it, if you see the onslaught that is against them, their eyes, their ears, all of us but especially our kids, especially our youth, because they know if they can get them, if they can get them, it can be like this. We said they started serving the Baals. They had forgotten what God had done. But you, 1 Peter 2, 9, it says you are a chosen race a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for his own possession. You see, we need an identity. We need an identity inside of us that we know we're a chosen race. We're grafted in. A royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for his own possession, that you may proclaim the excellencies of him who called you out of what? Darkness into his marvelous light. Hallelujah. That's my identity. I'm chosen. I'm royal. I am called. I'm his possession. When we have that as our identity, when we have encountered God and we know him, we become those that are zealous. But we have to fight to maintain that. Because there is everything that is coming against us for our time, our attention, distraction. I mean, it is constant. And what we have to do is be counterculture. How? By being kingdom culture. There's no other way to be counterculture unless we're kingdom culture. So you and I, we have to know who we are. But first of all, most importantly, we have to know whose we are. We have to know whose we are. I'm his. I'm his possession. 
and I'm going to serve him, and I'm going to know him, and I'm going to press into him with every bit of energy inside of me, with every bit of enthusiasm, with every bit of passion, with every bit of heart, with my time, with my energy. I am going to pursue, because if not, I'm going to be passive. And what happens to passive people? What happens to passive people? They just become, they, they, they go along with the crowd. Have you seen where the crowd is going these days? They certainly are not ones who know their identity. We have to be kingdom culture, and we have to be counter culture, and we have to be those that are raising up a generation that will be different, that will look different, that will sound different. We have to be those who are raising up a generation who they know who they are. And regardless of our age, we've got to be generation zeal. Generation zeal. I'm going to say that again. Generation zeal. Generation zeal. And you know, I was watching a worship service. And I saw this young person, and she was Generation Z. And she had a T-shirt on, and it said, Generation Zeal. And I said, Hallelujah! A young person who knows their God and knows what they're called to be. Hallelujah. We have to know who we are. And regardless of our age, we've got to be generation zeal. Now here's some generations. Generation Alpha was born 2010 to 2024. That's our young people, our real young people. Generation Z, born 1995 to 2009. Generation Y, born 1980 to 1994. Generation X, and some of these, some people call these millennials, but or uh, some of the other generations down here, I think Generation Y. Generation X, 1965 to 1979. Baby Broomers, 1946 to 1964. I want to tell you this. It doesn't matter what year you're born. It doesn't matter what generation you're in. God has an encounter for every generation. And don't you remember that with the baby boomers, there was the healing revivals that were pour out. And then a little bit later, there was the charismatic renewal. And then a little bit later, there were other revivals that sprung forth. And it wasn't too long ago we were hearing about Asbury. And I, I was talking with some of the kids uh, a couple days ago when I was telling them about the charismatic revival that when I was growing up, my mom got in the midst of the charismatic renewal and she got out of the, the Baptist church because she got filled with the Holy Ghost. And there were little Catholic groups that were getting baptized in the Holy Spirit. And, and I'm telling you, God has a move for each and every generation. But let's make sure no matter what age we are that we're staying on board. And I want to move now. It doesn't matter my age. And I want to see a moving in Generation Alpha. I want to see a moving in Generation Z. I want to see a moving in the millennials. I want to see a moving. But I can't be like those that when I, that when I die off, they get turned off. And some of us, we've died off spiritually. And those that have come after us, they've gone serving other gods. But the Lord is seeing that this is the time when the generations are beginning to run together. And those that he's calling out a remnant. And he has an assignment. He has an assignment for you. It's not about age. Because you're a part of this generation right now that God has an assignment for. And do you remember when God called them into the promised land? And there were 10 that said, oh, it's too hard. It's too difficult. Let's make sure that we say nothing can change this generation. 
Nothing can help the world in the state it's in now. Let's not be those that are naysayers. But let's come in and let's say, you know what? God has a plan and a purpose for this generation. God is leading them into a place of promise. God is leading them into a place of revival. God is bringing them into the land, and I'm going with them. Hallelujah. Because there were two who said, I'm going in. And yes, it's a good land. And yes, we can do it. With our God, we can do it. Nothing is impossible for him. We need to be those. And you know what? When we are those, we're going in and we're going to take the land. But we have to have a generational mindset. We have to have a generational heart. We have to be those that are ready. Malachi 4, 5, and 6, it says, See, I will send prophet Elijah to you before that great and dreadful day of the Lord comes. Oh, I don't know about you, but I think we're getting closer and closer and closer and closer to the dreadful day of the Lord. But he said he is sending the spirit of Elijah. And guess who he's starting with? Is he starting with the kids? It says, but he will turn the hearts of the parents to their children. See, he's starting with me. Anybody? Anybody? He will turn the hearts of the parents to their children and the hearts of the children to their parents, or else I will come and strike the land with total destruction. God is coming, and what he is doing is he is turning the hearts of the fathers and the mothers that they would see this generation that is coming up, and they would say, we must grab a hold of them. We must love on them. We must challenge them. We must get in their face. We must pray for them. I remember I heard this one guy, and he says, when's the last time you fasted? When's the last time you fasted for your kids? When's the last time you fasted for this generation coming up? I'm telling you, the zeal of the Lord, the zeal of the Lord He is wanting to come and accomplish something that is way beyond what we have seen because he wants to turn the hearts of the parents to the children and the children to the parents. I was talking to some parents in this place today, and you might not be a natural parent, but you are a spiritual parent. And the Lord says, receive. Receive the challenge, even today, to have a heart for the generations, to have a heart and declare that you shall be a part of generation zeal. Hmm. And it's not about age. Hallelujah. Because Caleb and Joshua went in the land. And they were able to partake. But you know what? Their peers died in the wilderness. Let us not be those. Let us be those that rise up and say, we will. We will. We will. We will. We will take the land. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. What are some ways that we take the land? What are some ways that we be a part of Generation Z zeal. What are some ways? First, we have to take a good look in the mirror. and We have to say, Lord, am I zealous for you? Show me what temperature I am, because you're either hot or you're not. And in the word, it says that we're either hot or cold. And for the lukewarm, Jesus would vomit us. So we have to say, Lord, let me be one that it would examine my own heart. Am I hot or am I not? Because there's really only one temperature that he wants me to be. Jesus. We got to be a zeal to be his. We have to have a zeal for encounter. We have to have a zeal to be hot. 
We have to have a zeal to confront injustice. Jesus was one when he came into the temple and it says he saw all the money changers. He said, take these things away. This is John 2, verse 16. Take these things away. Do not make my father's house a house of trade. And his disciples remembered that it was written, zeal for your house will consume me. We have to be those that have zeal for encounter and zeal for the house. Zeal against injustice. Zeal to have spiritual children. When we see injustice, we need to begin to confront it. Why? Because the next generation comes in and they say, well, you say this, but you live this way. You, you say this when you're at church, but then you live this way. No. We're going to be people who are wholehearted. We don't just talk the talk. We walk the walk. And we're not positioning things so for our unrighteous gain. But we're being people of integrity. See, somebody is watching. Somebody is looking. And it's the next generation. I remember I was having a conversation with someone, and they're in their 20s. And we were talking about, you know, living up close so people could see you. And he said to me, why, well, I, I didn't know that, like, it could be, you know, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And I said, what do you mean? And he's like, well, just going after God. Going after God. But he got close enough to me to see that how I was on Sunday was how I was at home, how I was during the week. And he said, but it's every day. Yeah, it's every day I'm going after God. It's morning I'm going after God. It's night I'm going after God. It's during even when I'm in the car, I'm going after God. You see, our kids want to see something real. They want to see something real. They don't want us to come in and act one way when we're in the service and act another way when we go home. They want to know, are you real? Is your God real? Is your faith real? Is your prayer real? Is your pursuit real? Are you full of zeal? Hallelujah. I rhymed and I didn't mean to. Are you full of zeal? 1 Kings 17, 17 through 24. I'm not going to read it, but you know the story. There was a widow that had a heart for Elijah. And she made him a place so he could come and rest with her in her home with her husband. And he had the wonderful guest room and Elijah said to his servant, you know, this woman has hosted my presence, but what can I do for her? And his servant said, well, she doesn't have a son. And he said, oh. And he released a prophetic word. And he said, you shall, you shall have a son. I want to tell you the Holy Spirit, the spirit of Elijah is releasing a prophetic word over this generation. And he's saying, I want to give you children. I want to give you sons. I want to give you daughters. I want you to open up your heart and wrap your heart around a generation. I want you to be ready that we can run this race together. Parents and children and children and parents regardless of whether you have kids now, because we have to run together, every age group, every nation. And she had that son, but something happened. He fell ill. He fell sick. And he died. I want to tell you, we can look around us and we could see, oh, what's the promise of revival? It feels like it's dead. What's the promise in my family? It feels like it's dead. 
What's the promise that God has given me? And I thought, oh, it's right there. It's so close. And it, it looks dead. But you know what Elijah did? He came. He came into that house. And it says in verse 21, 1 Kings 17, it says, And then he stretched himself upon the child three times. And he cried to the Lord, Oh, Lord, my God, let this child's life come into him again. And the Lord listened to the voice of Elijah, and the life of the child came back into him again, and he revived. <laughs> Hallelujah! Hallelujah! And Elijah took the child and brought him down and delivered him to his mother. <laughs> and Elijah said, see, your son lives. And the woman said to Elijah, now I know that you're a man of God and that the word of the Lord in your mouth is truth. You see, when the spirit of Elijah comes, it touches your hearts, it touches your life, it begins to take you and turn you into that that has a voice and a heart and a cry for the next generation. The spirit of Elijah that would lie upon the dead, that would lie upon the cold body, and contend for the Spirit of God to come in. I'm asking you, are you willing to contend for the Spirit of God to touch a generation and to touch a nation, to touch the ones around about you, to touch your sons, to touch your daughters, to touch the kids? I want to see it so that they're so passionate going after him. I have to be the example. They're not going to follow a lukewarm mama. And if they do, they're going to follow a mama into lukewarmness. Or worse, into the bales. Worse. You see, we've got to examine our hearts this morning. And we have to say, I'm drawing a lion, and I'm going to be, I'm getting in the game. I'm getting in the game. I'm going to be a contender for that which God has me contend for. Elijah knew the promise of God had come, but that son was stretched out, and he, he didn't send his, somebody else. He got right on top of that dead body. And he stretched himself out. And he began to speak life. And I'm telling you, God is calling us that we would be ones that would speak life, that we would contend, that we would be generation zeal, and that we would want to see our children and our grandchildren and our great-grandchildren, we wouldn't want to see them on fire. We would want to see them flowing in the fire of God, and it's going to take getting in their face. Elijah, he said he was mouth to mouth, face to face. Do you know what your kids are watching? Do you know what they're reading? Do you know who they're talking to? Face to face, mouth to mouth, get in their face. Because many of us, what we do is we spend a lot of time and we are contending for other things while the enemy is contending for our children. All day long, they spend time in a secular environment. They have their ear pods on. They've got their nose in a screen. And I can tell you, they're not teaching them the word. I can tell you that. How much are you contending for your children? Are you challenging them? Do they read their Bible? Do they have a prayer life? Do they talk to God? Do you contend with them on your knees? But you have to contend for their screens, for their screen time, for their attention. We must 
be those that our generation zeal, or we'll never see our kids be generation zeal. I remember there was one time my mama, she said to me, well, you're not reading your Bible like your sister did. <clears throat> and I remember we would get in the car. We were going somewhere. What do you think my mama used to do? Sing, praise, pray in tongues. I mean, she did. But she would also confront me when she knew that I wasn't where I was supposed to be. And I can tell you I wouldn't be standing here today if it wasn't for a tenacious woman of faith. Sometimes so tenacious she would make my daddy so mad. I remember when she wanted to put me in Christian school and my father thought it was too expensive. And they had a, they had a, a, um, uh, gun, what, what do they call that? Like a duel. But, but it came down to it. He said, okay. And do you know that changed my life? When I went into that Christian school, it was grade seven, and I began to realize my thoughts were not what God wanted them to be. My thoughts were worldly. And I began to change, and I began to have encounter with God, and it, it, Cause something in me to shift because somebody contended for me. And I want to ask you in this room, what are you contending for? Are you going to be a part of generation zeal? Because I'm telling you, it's not about the age. Caleb and Joshua took the ground. But they were contending for the inheritance of the next generation. And I believe with all of my heart that the inheritance of the next generation is that they would be contenders, that they would be zealous, that they would be passionate, that they would be real deal Christians, and that they would take their place. They would take their place. And they would be so hot on fire for Jesus. So hot on fire for Jesus. Oh, Jesus, 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 Jesus. So hot on fire for Jesus that nothing would deter them in any way. Hallelujah. I just want to ask you, stand to your feet this morning and just bow your hearts and your heads before the Lord. Hallelujah. I want to ask you, when's the last time you just had a fresh encounter with him? Because he always wanna, wants to have a fresh encounter with you. We can't lead a generation and we can't lead a nation without fresh encounter. And sometimes it can be about going to church and going through the motions but that doesn't touch a generation. Hallelujah. It has to be an issue of the heart. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. I think it, you know, that you want to consume us, Lord. I'm not talking about doing something good enough so that God is happy with you or Pastor Patty's happy with you or somebody else is happy with you. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about encounter. Because, you see, he wants the zeal of the Lord to consume you. And that can only happen if you encounter him in a real way. 
Oh, Jesus, we want to encounter you. Jesus, we want to encounter you. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, we're just positioning our hearts this morning, God. We're positioning our hearts. Oh, Liabaka Shikiaramaka. If I said something this morning and you, it's, it's pricking at you and you know you need to lift that up to the Lord, just lift it up to him right now. Say, Lord, forgive me. Where maybe I got distracted or where I've been serving some other kind of vision. Or Lord, maybe I haven't been contending like you wanted me to contend. Or Lord, I have to say, if it had to be hot or not, I'd be in the not category. Oh, I'm just lifting it up to you right now, Jesus. And I'm saying, touch my heart. Touch my life. Touch my eyes. Lord, we need that face-to-face -face encounter with you. Lord, we need that face-to-face, -face, just let, like Elijah came. And he was mouth-to-mouth, face-to-face, heart-to-heart. Lord, we need that with you. Come and breathe on us. Holy Spirit, come and breathe on us. Come and breathe. 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 Oh, Jesus. As the child, as whatever generation we're in, Lord, we just say, come and breathe on us. We need more life, more zeal. And Lord, we need you to heal. We need you to heal. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If the Lord is speaking to you this morning, you say, you know, I just want to respond. I want to respond to this word. I want to say, yes, breathe on me, Holy Spirit. Yes, fill me with more zeal. I know it's Thanksgiving and some of you guys got a meal. <laughs> oh, but I know I just want to respond myself this morning. And I want to say, Lord, I'm in. I'm in. I'm in the game. Pick me. I know, Lord, I'm chosen. I'm a holy nation. I'm in, I'm in, I'm in. If the Lord is speaking to you this morning and you want to just respond and say, yes, I'm in. And Lord, I want you to consume me. Consume me with your zeal. If that's you, just come forward. Come quickly, quickly. Come, just come, just come, just come. And it's not saying that you don't have any zeal. It's just saying, come on, Jesus, touch me, touch me, touch me, change me. Oh, me, make me an instrument of healing. Make me a contender. Make me one that'll take the land. Lord, make me one that's going to stand with this generation. Oh, that I'm generation zeal. And I'm going to see you heal. Turning the hearts of the fathers to the children. And the children to the fathers. I'm generation zeal. I'm a generation. It's hungry and hungry and hungry for you. Oh, Father, I thank you for a fresh zeal. Lord, I thank you for a fresh anointing. Father, I thank you that you're coming over your people. Father, I thank you that you're coming now. Father, I thank you that you're touching them. Lord, I thank you that there's encounter. Lord, I thank you that there's something fresh. And Lord, every way 
that we have had our hearts. Lord, if they've been cold, if they've been dry, oh, Lord, we just repent right now. And, Lord, we say, I want to be generation zeal. I want to be generation zeal. And I want to be part of the ones who heal, even the generational rifts. Oh, Father, I thank you that the fathers are turning to the children and the mothers and the fathers are turning to the children, Lord, and the children's hearts are turning to the mothers and the fathers. And, Father, we thank you for a fresh zeal. We thank you for a fresh hunger. Oh, just lift your voice up with me, saints, and just pray with me. Pray with me. Pray with me. Oh, fresh hunger and fresh zeal. Oh, koreba karaba sinamin de aboko shike ha. Oh, le abakanda raba seke. Oh, de 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 abakara ba sombo de boko de 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 abaka. Lord, as many families are gathering this weekend, Lord, we're releasing life, 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 life over them. We're releasing life over the generations, over the grandpas, over the grandmas, the mothers, the fathers, the kids, the babies. Oh, we release life, 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 life. We release life, life over them in the name of Jesus. We release life, 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 life. If you're watching online, we release life over you. Fresh zeal, fresh passion, fresh fire. Just do this for me. Lay your hand on your head and lay your other hand on your abdomen. Lord, I'm declaring fresh fire over them, Lord. I'm declaring the fire of the Holy Ghost over them. I'm declaring fresh fire, fresh zeal, fresh passion, fresh hunger, fresh desire to pray, fresh zeal, fresh zeal, fresh zeal, fresh zeal. Oh, Father, I'm praying a heart that contends for the next generation. Oh, let it burn, let it burn, let it burn, let it burn. Let it burn, let it burn, let it burn within him. Oh, Korebeki Arabaka. As I was standing down there, I, I, I saw this vision surprise me. I, I, um, th there was a hole that was in the ground, and, and I saw this snake dart out and quickly go into the hole. So I, I, I want to say if, if there's an area in your heart where there's an open door, you know there's an open door. Maybe it's it's things you're watching online or, or things that you know have been in your heart, maybe bitterness, unforgiveness, resentment. If there's any open doors right now, it startled me when I saw this vision. You wanna close that door right now. I just wanna encourage you, if, that, if that's you, you don't have to go around telling everybody between you and the Lord right now. Just ask the Lord to forgive you, repent any kind of thing any pornography any, any any kind of thing resentment any kind of thing watching uh, horror movies and, and and things online that are just filled with wrong values anything that would give the enemy an open door just repent of it right now don't play with that thing the enemy is looking for a home he's looking for a place in your life and the thing that will steal your zeal right away would be open doors to the demonic so Father, we repent, O oh God, in the name and through the blood of the Lord Jesus. Father, forgive us, Lord, where there's been open doors. Father, forgive us where there's been open doors in the sexual realm. Forgive us where there's been open doors, Father, in our minds, what we're thinking, what we're reading. Father, forgive us where there's been open doors, Father, of criticism, open doors of resentment, open doors of judgment. Father, forgive us for the things that we've opened up the door to the enemy and our zeal, Father, has been frozen where the enemy is bit on down deep on the inside. And in the name of Jesus, I command every demonic power now that's been released upon you now, 
I command it all the way up and all the way out. Pornography spirits, sexual spirits, I command you all the way up and all the way out. All the way up and all the way out now. In Jesus' name, bitterness, resentment, unforgiveness, all the way up, all the way up, all the way up, all the way up and all the way out, all the way up, all the way out. Judgments, even anger, resentment. I command these spirits to lift jealousy, rage. I command these spirits all the way up, all the way up, all the way up, all the way up, all the way out, all the way up. All the way up, all the way out now, in Jesus' name. Things that you're watching online that maybe you wouldn't want flashed across the screen right here. Father, we repent in the name of Jesus. Father, we repent for hypocrisy. Father God, we repent for double standards. We repent for double-mindedness, Father. I command every double-minded spirit, I command it to lift. I command every power come out, come out now in the mighty name and through the blood of the Lord Jesus. Father, we're declaring, Father, that breakthrough anointing. We're declaring, Father God, a breaker anointing falling upon those areas. Father, close the open doors. I command every gatekeeper demons, you release your hands off those doors. And Father, we're declaring an eviction. Father God, in Jesus' name, fill every empty spot with your Holy Spirit. Father, cover us with your blood, we pray in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, well, I'm just going to bless you. But those of you who are up here, we're just going to come and we're just going to fra say fresh zeal in the name of Jesus. So stay up here. But right now, I bless everyone. Father, I bless them. I bless their families. I bless their Thanksgiving. Lord, I bless this season. Father, I thank you that it's going to be a time and a season, Lord, where they step into all that you have for them and their inheritance, oh God. Lord, that they would take the land and that they would be those that would see the amazing promise that you have for us. And so, and even those uh, watching online, Lord, we bless them right now in the mighty name of Jesus. And we, Father, we extend grace, grace to them. And we thank you for them in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I'm just going to come just quickly and uh, I, I want to lay my hands on you and just speak fresh zeal. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I bless all of you. Lord, we bless the food as we have our uh, Coffee Connect tonight, today. And Lord, we just thank you for a time of fellowship. Lord, we thank, for, thank you for those who are visiting with us. So God, Father, we speak that they have a divine destiny over their life. And Lord, we just thank you for what you're doing in their hearts and in their lives. In Jesus' name, hallelujah, hallelujah. Just going to release a blessing over you. Oh, Father, I thank you for fresh zeal, fresh zeal, fresh zeal, fresh zeal, Lord. I thank you, Lord, for just pouring out your spirit over her, Lord. Fresh zeal, Lord. Fresh zeal, the power of the Holy Ghost coming upon in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Fresh zeal, fresh zeal, fresh zeal. Fresh zeal, fresh zeal, fresh zeal, oh God. Oh, let it burn, Lord, fresh zeal. Let the power of the Holy Spirit burn, 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 burn. Enter and through her, oh God, a new dimension of prayer and praise in the name of Jesus. Oh, a new dimension, Jesus, 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 Jesus. Oh, something fresh, Lord. Something fresh, Lord. Something fresh, Lord. Something fresh, Lord. Pour your spirit out on a fresh seal. Fresh seal. Fresh seal, God. Fresh seal. Fresh seal. Fresh seal. Jesus. 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 Oh, Father, I thank you for your healing power, God. Your healing power, Lord. Fresh seal for Craig, oh God. Just go deep in his heart, oh God. Let him encounter you in a fresh new way. The encounter of the Lord. Holy Spirit, just come upon him. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Just heal, 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 heal. Lord, we break every curse spoken over him. And Lord, we release life. Father, we thank you, God, for life. We thank you for destiny. Father, we thank you, O oh God, for healing in the deepest parts of his being. Oh God, we just bless you in the name of Jesus. Oh, Father, we thank you for this mother of Zion. Lord, fresh fire upon her. Lord, fresh fire, God. Oh, let it permeate her every part of her being, oh, God. Father, I thank you that she is one that's raised up a generation, oh, God. And, Father, we thank you for the promise that her sons, that her daughters shall see revival, shall be revived, oh, God, and that they are going to be a part of those leading the ones over the hill. So, Lord, fresh, fresh, something fresh 
something fresh, something fresh, God. Oh, quote a big rabaka. Fresh fire, Jesus. Fresh zeal. Fresh empowerment, God. Oh, baptizer, God, with the Holy Ghost. Oh, baptizer, baptizer, baptizer with the Holy Spirit, Lord. Let it flow out of her like rivers of living water, Jesus. Let it flow, 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 flow. And Father, I thank you that you're causing her to be a mother of Zion in the name and through the blood of the Lord Jesus. Just pour your spirit out. The Lord says that even the dreams and visions which you have started to experience, the Lord says, I'm going to broaden it. I'm going to deepen it and get ready, says the Lord, because even that which you've experienced is just a taste because the Lord says, I've called you to be one that's on the wall. And he says, even as I, I have spoken to you, he says, the Lord says, you are going to take your place and that you are going to fill that gap and I just see you and you're standing and that we're in a place where there was an empty hole but not anymore not anymore because you're there and the Lord says you're taking your place upon the wall thank you Jesus just give her a fresh baptism of the Holy Ghost Lord fresh Lord something for Angela fresh God fresh zeal God oh fresh zeal fresh zeal fresh zeal oh God and Lord pour out your Holy Spirit upon her Lord your healing presence your healing power oh let it come Lord let it come 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 Jesus thank you for my brother oh God fresh zeal oh God that it will consume him Jesus something fresh oh god just pour out upon him lord more 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 of your presence more of your spirit god just consume them lord i thank you god for this mother and father that they truly are mother and father lord let something be birthed inside of them oh god where they contend for the next generation oh god thank you jesus thank you jesus thank you jesus Oh, pursuit, pursuit, oh God. Give her an encounter, God. Give her a fresh encounter. Father, we thank you for the fire of the Holy Ghost. Lord, that the zeal would consume her, oh God. And Father, even as she is raising this little one, Lord, this little one would see the promise, God, of revival that you have for her. In Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Fresh fire, Lord. Fresh fire. Fresh seal. Lord, encounter with the Holy Spirit. Let it encounter with the Holy Spirit. Encounter with the Holy Spirit. Encounter with the Holy Spirit. Lord, encounter with the Holy Spirit. Oh, just bring that baptism, oh God. Oh, just encounter of uh, the Holy Spirit. Oh, Father, I thank you, Lord, for something fresh. Zeal for my brother, Lord, let it consume him. Oh, I just see like a fire poker. And I see that, that fire poker going into the fire. And the Lord says, I'm bringing you to a new temperature. I said, I, I'm bringing you to a place of red hot. And he says, get ready because you're going to see such a shift. Such a shift in your heart and such a shift in your life. Oh, hallelujah. Father, I thank you for zeal, 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 zeal. Zeal, 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 zeal. Zeal, God. Zeal, zeal, zeal. Oh, and Lord, that you would send the right ones around him. Lord, the right brothers around him, God. The right people around him, Jesus. To mentor him, to pour into him, Lord. Zeal, 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 Lord. Zeal, 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 zeal. Zeal, Jesus. Zeal, zeal, zeal. Oh, pour out your zeal. Pour out your fire. Pour out your zeal, God. Zeal, zeal, zeal. Jesus, zeal, zeal, zeal. Lord, zeal. This one's already zealous, Lord, but Lord, give her more, 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 more zeal, more fire, more passion, more prayer, oh God. Zeal! And let her step into that where she's raising up and bringing up and mentoring God. A new level of mentorship, oh God. Bring her into it. In the name and through the blood of the Lord Jesus. Zeal, 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 God. 
Thank you for fresh seal, fresh fire for Pastor Anne Marie, Lord. Oh, Father, I thank you that she hasn't seen anything yet. Lord, I thank you that you're sending the sons, you're sending the daughters, Lord. You're sending those all around about her. Oh, because you called her to be a matriarch even in the midst. Oh, and Lord, that she's going to know. Lord, that generational zeal, oh God, that she's going to be a leader of those coming over the hill. So, Father, I thank you for fresh zeal, fresh fire, God. Oh, that it would consume her, consume her, consume her in the name and through the blood of the Lord Jesus. Oh, hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. I see you, and now I see you, and I, you have these gold rings, and now you're, you're flipping them out, <clears throat> and you're, you're, you're throwing them. And the Lord says, I'm going to cause you that, that even there, there's a, a prophetic uh, intercessory apostolic anointing that you're going to be throwing out. And now I see these gold rings, and now they're changing. And they're changing, and they're, they're changing into selfie lights. And now I, I see them and they're changing into um, like life vests or not vests, but those rings, life vest, you know, when you, you grab a hold of something to be saved. And the Lord says you're going to release some words. And God is going to use you even in, in that place of social media. And he says you're going to touch the next generation. He says, get ready. Because they need, they need, they need mothers and fathers. And I've called you to be a mother even in this next generation, says the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Well, Father, we just thank you for today. Lord, I pray for JJ. Lord, I thank you, oh God, Lord, that you called him to be one that is a minister in the midst of this generation, oh God. So, Father, I thank you that you're pouring out zeal. You're pouring out zeal. And even that presence of God to heal. So, Father, I just bless him. And I thank you for all that you have for him. In Jesus' mighty name, hallelujah. Fresh fire, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. Well, we have a coffee connect outside, so make sure you take a moment and you uh, get some goodies and coffee out there. Just bless you and thank you for coming today. And we are thankful for you. We are thankful for you. Amen.